So up next to talk about one way that we can add value is Ryan McDermott, who's going to talk about the empowering nature of public art. As soon as I can get his slides up. Here we go. Cool. Uh, I grew up as a hacker. I'm sure a lot of people grew up as hackers, too, uh, that are here running makerspaces. And what that meant is that, uh, at least when I was a kid, if somebody told me that I wasn't allowed to do something, I basically took it as a challenge and I did it twice as hard. Um, that was basically a superpower because that meant that I was completely conditioned to never have anybody tell me that I couldn't do anything. So when I wanted to start my own company, it wasn't a problem. I'd been doing that sort of thing my whole life, not listening to what people told me to do. Um, so at our makerspace, the Walter Hive, <clears throat> we decided to see if we could figure out how to turn a lifetime of never letting anybody tell you what to do into a week-long workshop, uh, and I think we did it. So how did we do that? Well, we taught people how to build pretty much everything. Um, you know, as a hacker, I looked at the world as being super malleable. Uh, I could just turn it into whatever I wanted to turn it into, and we wanted to make all these kids feel the same way. So how do we do that? Um, well, step number one, we're gonna teach people how to make stuff out of metal. Uh, the airplane I flew in here is made out of metal. My car is made out of metal. Uh, metal also has this really cool property that it's super strong. Um, it's also really intimidating. So going through the process of learning that you can manipulate it uh, feels really cool. This girl learned how to weld. I taught her how to weld in about five minutes. Um, if you have a welder, look on the back. There's a switch. Turn it on. You probably know how to weld now. Um, <laughs> all, the all these four steps are what we do in the first day. Uh, so there's, there's four workshops we do in about three hours. Step two, let's learn how to make stuff out of wood. Uh, your house is probably made out of wood. This podium's made out of wood. Um, if you have tools at home in your garage, there's a really good chance that they're woodworking tools. So let's teach people how to make stuff out of wood. It's all around them. Uh, this is the workshop, or this is the project that we have the kids do. Uh, it looks really simple. Uh, it turns out that some of it's counterintuitive. Um, you have to learn how to use a miter saw here. You have to learn how to make a fixture. And the hardest part, oddly, is learning how to use a power screwdriver, weirdly. But uh, we teach them how to do that stuff in about 45 minutes. Um, step three, okay, so you know how to make stuff out of two by fours and you know how to make stuff out of square tubing. Um, what if your stuff doesn't look like a rectangle and you can't make it out of uh, two by fours and square tubing? Well, guess what? We're talking about makerspaces, so we're gonna talk about laser cutters. Uh, if you can find a shape or if you can draw the shape in Inkscape or you can find it on Google and trace it in Inkscape or something like that, you can cut it on a laser cutter. Um, so now you know how to make stuff that's super complex and you feel really empowered because you learned how to do that in about 45 minutes. Okay, step number four, learn how to program. Um, I'm a programmer by trade. That's uh, what I spend a good majority of my time doing. Anybody who tells you that programming is hard is lying to you. Um, programming is not hard and everybody should learn how to do it. Hopefully most of you guys already know. Um, we teach all these kids to program Arduinos. Again, it's in about 45 minutes. At the end of that 45 minute uh, class, <coughs> they're writing if statements and for loops and they're writing lighting programs for NeoPixels. Um, they all learn it very, very quickly, and they feel like they can do it after the end of the 45 minutes. All right, now you know how to make anything. You know how to program a computer, and you know how to make stuff out of wood, and you know how to make stuff out of metal, and you know how to run a laser cutter. Uh, what are you going to do now? Well, you're going to build interactive art, or you're going to build public art. Turns out when you build something and you put it into a space, you take some power over that space. That is super empowering. It's a good thing. A key component to this workshop is that we don't help the kids very much. Um, we're there to run the tools, but these kids are presenting to the rest of the group about what their plan is for the day, who's going to do what, what materials they need, how they're delegating tasks, things like that. Um, these are some of the projects that the kids made. Obviously, that's made on a laser cutter. Um, it's got an Arduino in it and a bunch of lights. A key part of this, um, well, here, let's look at some other projects that they made. These kids made, uh, they wanted to originally make a, a cell phone charger, but we told them to make a human charger instead, which it turns out looks a lot like a bench. Um, they had to learn to weld. That girl right there, she welded this whole thing. She ran the bandsaw all by herself. She, she designed it. All of the, the metal structure under that was her doing. These kids, uh, they made, you push a button on the side of it, and it plays like dance music and lights up. It's really fun. There's an Arduino in it and a bunch of lights. Um, so the key to this is that we're not giving these kids some predefined recipe, having them follow it, and then sending them on their way and being like, aha, you learned something. Because when you do that, you didn't learn something. You read some instructions out of a book. You assembled it the way somebody told you to, and, and, then, and then you left. Um, giving them that feeling that they know how to do all this stuff, and then they actually did all that stuff, is, is profoundly empowering. Um, this is a picture at the end of this workshop. It's five days long. Um, we actually have them exhibit in our art gallery. We have a, a gallery on, on our campus. 
Um, and we invite the community to come in and to be, you know, really proud of these kids. So they also get to feel really tall because there's all these people now who came in to look at their stuff. I also say band kits. I'm almost out of time. But I really hate that feeling of like, hey, you know, get this kit, follow the instructions, and now you learn something. I, I, I don't agree with that. So teach skills and then have people do stuff with them. Cool. Thank you.